From Hollywood, it's time now for Bob Bailey as... Johnny Dollar. Frank Porter at Allied Casualty. How's it going, kid? I don't know. You ever find Joe Penny? The Harbor Patrol found him floating around the harbor. He'd been shot and his feet were burnt. What? Gee whiz, torture. Well, what can I do to help? Find a girl who was once married to him. Joe Panny had a wife? Yeah, she wears a mink stole these days and carries a gun. She's tied up with it somewhere. Her name's Iris Carter. Iris Carter? You've met her? Just long enough to get slugged with her gun. Well, wait a minute. I'd like to get it all straight. Can I come over? I'll be here. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of a man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Allied Casualty and Insurance Company Limited, Markham Building, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the McCormick matter. Expense account, item 9, $14 even, secretarial services. I dictated a detailed report of the $100,000 McCormick case. I did it for two reasons. One, to make certain that Allied and the New York police were thoroughly informed of my part in the matter. And two, to review the case for my own benefit. One of the key figures, Joe Panny, was a murder victim. Attached is a copy of that report. I tried to cover as closely as possible my conversation with Mike Cairn at Sing Sing when he tipped me off that Joe Panny had something to do with the McCormick burglary of five years ago. Also, one conversation with Joe Panny, his subsequent disappearance and murder. I had a copy for Frank Porter when he showed up at my room. He read it from top to bottom. Gee whiz, Johnny, if this isn't something, you come here for Joe Panny and looks like he did the McCormick job, now he's dead. You're stopped. What can you do? Find his wife, maybe? You're doing this at your own expense, aren't you? Oh, I think your company will pay for it in time. You have to recover the stuff. I know. You think you will? I think so, yeah. Well, your key man's dead. You have to start all over again. Maybe not. I don't really know whether Joe Panning was my key man or not. I still can't see a small-time auto thief working a big, slick safe burglary. Every indication is that he was the one. I know. I'd like to find that girl, Iris Carter, and talk to her about it. She's connected with it. Now, from what you say on the paper, yeah, very much. Oh, gee whiz, I feel like a fifth wheel. I'm not helping you a bit. You know, I handled this case for the company when it first broke. I worked with Lieutenant Martin for six months on it, and we didn't turn up a thing. You're on it three or four days, and you have all kinds of action. Well, I must have stepped in at the right time. Yeah. Johnny, mm-hmm. somebody gunned Joe Panny down. No, I know you like to work alone and do things your own way, but be careful if you stay on this. I get worried when somebody starts shooting. Oh, sure. I didn't get that, though. Why? If I keep on this, I wouldn't let it go now if my life depended on it. I'm going to find that woman, and I'm going to find the stuff. Sure. Well, gee whiz. Don't let anything happen to you. I won't. I talked some more with Frank Porter about the case. He repeated his offer in the name of Allied Casualty to help if he could. I told him I'd take it up on it if anything came up at all. He left. I was at Central Police Station ten minutes later. And five minutes after that, Lieutenant Dules Martin was calling for the medical examiner's report on Joe Panny's death. A uniformed man brought it in. Martin shoved it across the desk at me. The M.E. says Joe Panny's been dead about 48 hours or longer. 225 slugs right through the chest, penetrated both lungs, one through the neck. It's a very neat shooting at that range. What range? Oh, at least 20 feet, maybe longer. Not many people shoot 25s that well. It's a little gun. A woman's gun. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Now, let's talk about that woman you saw around there that night. Now, you say it was Panny's ex. Yeah. Iris Carter. I don't know whether her gun was a 25 or 32. Well, think about it. I have. Now, look, don't get sore with me. It's just that she looks like better than ever for opening this case up. I put her on in all points. (sighs) Sorry I got riled. That's all right. Now, the M.E. thinks that Panny was killed before he was dumped in the water, possibly ambushed by someone he didn't know or didn't trust. If he's right about the range, that'd fit in. 
Someone who knew him would do it close up. Yeah. Hey, wait. You said his feet were burnt. Yeah, I got the pictures here to prove it. Yeah, take a look. These are the glossies. Uh-huh. Now, these are the burns here, Dollar. Right here. Here and here. Then yeah. he wasn't ambushed, exactly. Look, I don't know what he was. But this is the crazy part. He was already dead when this happened. No rope marks on his legs or wrists. You don't sit still for burning, no matter how tough you are. It's fascinating, huh? Someone shot him down, then tried to make it look like he was tortured for information first. Cover up. He's supposed to look like he knew something, or had something. And maybe he didn't know or have anything at all. Oh, how do you feel? Lousy. If the burning was cover up, then maybe the big search of his room was cover up too, to throw us off. Uh, uh, to throw you off. Not me. I wasn't in on it then. Yeah. Well, one thing that's genuine. What's that? The corpse. An hour and a half later, a witness was delivered to the office of Lieutenant Martin. His name was Edmund Thompson. He sold papers in the dock area. Both Martin and I looked at him twice, and I could tell both of us were doubting the credulity of anything he might have to say. Hi. Hi. My name's Martin. This is Mr. Dollar. Yes, sir. Glad to know you both. Now, would you mind telling us everything you saw the other night? Tuesday night. Yeah, it was Tuesday. Sure, why not? I saw this guy dumped in the water. We understand that. Can you tell us the circumstances? It's against the will of God. Yes, it certainly is. Against the laws of nature, too. What did you see, Mr. Thompson? I prayed for them both. You tried, Dollar? When did you pray? Right after I saw it. Yes, sir. On the street, huh? No. I was on the vacant lot. I was cutting across towards the dock. Oh. Then I see this car pull up. Long black car. A lot of chrome on it. This fella jumps out and goes around at the back. He opens the trunk. Then he pulls this other fella out. Hoists him up and he carries him over the dock. Then he just lets him go. Then you prayed. Then I prayed. I was a little too scared to do anything else. Uh, this car the man had. Long black one, a lot of chrome. Sedan or coupe? What's the difference? Two seats or one seat? One seat. Happen to get the license number? Uh. All right, all right, let that go. How about the man? Can you describe him? He stood there, looked down at the water, and started himself a cigarette. Well, what kind of a face did he have? Dark, light, a mustache, what? A devil's face. Oh, swell. Now, what does that mean? A devil? Mr. Thompson, do you understand that we want to apprehend this man, that he's responsible for one man's death, and that he might harm someone else? I'll pray for him. Pray for him all. Well, how was he dressed? Didn't notice. Hat? Don't know. Coat? Don't know. But he had a long black coupe. Do you know the make? Nope. Would you know him if you saw him again? Nope. Look, when you saw him dump a body into the water, why didn't you notify the police? Why should I? It's police business. Let them take care of their business. I'll take care of mine. Any of you fellas got a cigarette on you? I left Lieutenant Martin brooding over his witness, went out for a bite of dinner. When I called him later, he hadn't learned anything more, so I decided to call it a night and went back to my hotel. I found a note waiting for me from Jack Lang, the band leader friend of Iris Carter. Said he'd got a tip. She'd worked at one time at the Elmar Theater in the Bronx. If I learned anything, please let him know. He was still in love with her. Elmar Theater. I decided my night was far from over. Hey, you. Buy a ticket out front if you want to look at the girl. I only want to see one. Her name's Iris Carter. Does she work here? I just told you, go buy a ticket out front. Just tell me this. Does Iris Carter work here? Is the name familiar to you? Have you ever seen her or heard of her? 
You give me any more trouble, I'll clutch. I told you go out front. Can't you answer a simple question? I'm looking for Iris Carter. Iris Carter. You don't have to yell at mister. He never heard of it. What? Call me a cop, Gloria. Never this mind, guy's giving me... Never mind, I'll take care of him. Come on, you. Iris Carter, is that what you said? Yeah. I got to change. I got to get back on in five minutes. Then I'll talk to you later. You haven't got much to say. Stick around. I'll change back to the screen. Okay. I'm Gloria Ward. Who are you? Johnny Dollar. What do you want with Iris Carter? I want to see her and tell her something. Tell me. Well, for one thing, her ex-husband's dead. What? Oh, better watch that screen. Oh, oh. Say that again. Joe Panny, her ex-husband's dead. No kidding. That no good bum is really dead. Yeah. Where can I find her? She don't work here no more. Hasn't worked here in four or five years. She quit. Well, where is she? You took over from the old man out there when you heard me mention her name. You've satisfied yourself that I'm really looking for her, so suppose don't you... do flip with me, mister. I'm not satisfied about anything. Where is she? She got herself married to a nice guy. Good for her. Is she in town? You just want to see her and tell her Joe's dead? That's about it. I thought maybe she might be able to help me and the police find out who killed him. He was killed? Two days ago. They found his body today. How do you know about that? Are you a cop? I'm an insurance investigator. And you have to see her? You want it put in writing? Don't get in a hop. What I'm getting at is this. Quick change, huh? Now listen. Iris is good. You know what I mean? And she's married to a nice guy now. Will any of this make her trouble? Not if she hasn't done anything wrong. Well, I can tell you she hasn't. If it does make trouble, it'd be a shame. She's set up nice, and I like to see a girl set well, don't you? Certainly. Well, I haven't seen her almost since she left here, but... Well, you look like a right kind of guy. I believe you. Thanks, Gloria. She lives out in Long Island now. Her name's McCormick. Iris McCormick. <laughs> By the time I said goodbye to Gloria and walked out the stage door and got out into the alley, I thought I had most of it figured. The ex-wife of an ex-con married a wealthy Long Islander named McCormick. When the honeymoon was over, the safe was robbed. Walking out that alley, I was wondering whether to phone the police or allied casualty first. It isn't bad. Did you see him? I didn't see nobody. The car. See the car. The one that just gunned out. Oh, the car. We had a long black coupe, a lot of chrome. A fellow didn't have his lights on. Hey, that's against the law. Hey, you need help, mister. No. No, I'm all right. Now, here's our star, Bob Bailey, to tell you about tomorrow's episode. Thanks. Tomorrow, the end of the trail of a 38 caliber slug. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? 
Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try.